Hey everybody, it's Warboss Fitz. Welcome back for another episode of our How to Play series. Today we're going to be going over the Giant Tribes for Age of Fantasy. And before we get into the army list, we're going to go over our 3D Creator of the Week, where you can find some giants to play with. This week it is Cast and Play. Cast and Play have been around for a good long while in the 3D printing game. They have armies that cover the whole fantasy genre, all the way from little goblins up to giants. And today on this video, every unit you're going to see on the screen is going to be by them. So let's go ahead and get into the army list itself. Here we are in the army builder. Let's go down to the giant tribes. And we're going to start with the special rules. And this time I'm going to remember that I can zoom in like this. So special rules. Monster Hunter. This model gets AP plus 2 in melee against units where most models have a toughness 3 or higher. Stumble, when this model is activated, you may place it anywhere within D3 plus 1. Thick Skin, when units where all models have this rule take hits, those hits count as having AP minus 1 to a minimum of AP 0. That's going to give them a little bit more survivability on top of their already great defensive stats. Stumble is going to be good to get you a little bit more movement out of your big guys. And Monster Hunter just means that you have big guys that are made to kill other big guys. So, ooh, let's zoom out. Let's go ahead and go into make a list. So this army only has seven entries in it, but everything is a really high point unit, so you're going to be able to make large point armies out of this just fine. Let's start with our stock standard giant. 245 points, quality 4, defense of 3, fear 2, fearless, and toughness 12. Comes with a giant club for 6 attacks, AP 2 and a stomp for four attacks, AP one. You can replace the giant club for ranged attacks with hurl boulder for two shots at 18 inches, AP two and deadly three. Also getting a giant knife, so he still has six melee attacks. Or throwing rocks, two shots at 24 inches, blast three and indirect, also with a giant knife. So as you can see, your war machines are gonna be built into your giants here at the just basic giant level. You can also replace the giant club with a giant pike for 8 attacks, AP 1 and rending, or a giant hammer, 6 attacks and AP 4, or a giant flail, 10 attacks and AP 1. You can also upgrade them with war paint, which gives them regeneration. So with all your giants, you're just going to want to go ahead and budget in that war paint for regeneration on everything that you can, because you don't want to lose these guys to something dumb. You're going to want to hold them on the board for as long as possible. And for your weapon replacements, giant club is a good all-around one. Giant Pike for more attacks with rending to get rid of regeneration. Giant Hammer for the AP4. Or the Giant Flail with nearly double the attacks at AP1 instead of AP2. This is going to be in case you're fighting against somebody who has really low armored chaff units. Alright, we're going to go to the next unit. The Crusher Giant. Starts off at 270 points, quality 4, defense of 3, fear 2, fearless, furious, and toughness 12. Furious means that whenever he rolls a 6 in combat, whenever he charges, that it is going to get an extra hit on top of what already hits. Comes with Crush, 2 attacks, AP 2 with deadly 3, Giant Club, 6 attacks, AP 2. You replace the Giant Club with a Pike, a Hammer, or a Flail, and again with the War Paint with Regeneration. So this one has Crush, you cannot replace Crush. It has 2 attacks, AP 2 and deadly 3. This is going to be going after the other enemy large War Machines, Chariots, Carts, their elite infantry that have toughness of three and then the giant club you can switch that out for whatever you think you're going to need more of again same thing as before giant pike for rending to get rid of regeneration giant hammer for with ap4 to kill off the heavily armored stuff and giant flail 10 attacks ap1 to kill off all of the multiple chaff units that are going to be on the board simple enough next we come to the drunken giant 270 points quality four defense of three fear two fearless stumble and toughness 12. Stumble remembers the one that gives him an extra D3 plus 1 movement whenever he is activated. So that means this giant is going to be a little bit faster. Or you're going to be able to use him to kind of move around in combat where you want him to be. Comes with a drunken swing. Two attacks with blast 3. So this guy's made for taking out large squads of stuff. And a giant club again with 6 attacks AP2. Once again, you could do all of the same weapon upgrades for a pike, hammer, or a flail. Where it's going to be the same thing as on the other ones. And the war paint with regeneration. So far, all three of these giants are pretty much the same. Just a little bit of flavor added in to differentiate them. Like the giant is where you're going to get your war machines of throwing boulders. Crusher giant is going to be for taking out the war machines. And the drunken giant is made for taking out chaff units. Also, this is a way to get past the unit cap 
where it says max of three unit copies. This way you could take nine giants and still be within the force organization chart. All right, let's move on to some bigger stuff. The Battle Stomper Mega Giant, 420 points, quality four, defense of three, fear of three, fearless, slow, thick skin, and toughness 18. So he's got a big brick of wounds to chew through, and he's gonna reduce the enemy's AP by one. Comes with a Battle Stomp, three attacks with Blast three, and a Mega Club, 10 attacks, AP two. You can replace that Mega Club with a Mega Pike, so it's 12 attacks, keeps the AP2, but gives it Rending to get rid of Regeneration. And instead of War Paint, they get a Trample Upgrade, which gives them Impact of 3. So they're going to have 3 attacks whenever they charge in, hitting on a 2 on the enemy's base armor save. Just a little added damage buff to them, and for 15 points, if you got the extra points, which you might, because these things stack up weird in an army list, and what I mean by that is you're always going to have some little points left over. So Trample wouldn't be the worst thing to blow it on. I mean, it's 15 points. Why not? So as far as what this unit should be focusing on, it's got the thick skin, and it has a battle stomp with a blast of three. So it could be nine attacks there on top of 10 from the club or 12 from the pike. This thing's job is just to charge forward into the enemy, get into the middle of the thickest of it, and just start swinging. Next, we go to the Monster Eater Mega Giant. 430 points, quality 4, defense of 3, fear 3, fearless monster hunter, and toughness 18. Mega club, 10 attacks with AP2, stomp, 6 attacks at AP2. You can replace the mega club with a hurl pole for 3 shots at 18, AP2, and deadly 3 with a mega knife with 8 attacks. Or a throw debris, 3 shots at 24, blast 3 indirect with a mega knife. So this is the large version of your war machine giant. It's the same thing as the smaller giant, except one more attack, and it's buffed a bit, just to reflect on the larger side of the stuff he's hurling at you. You replace the Mega Club with a Mega Pike, 12 attacks, AP2, and rending, and you can give him the same trample with Impact 3. So what this giant should be focusing on is, with his Monster Hunter rule, giving him AP2 against stuff that is toughness 3 or higher, going after the enemy's biggest, biggest stuff. Like if there is a steam tank, or a Hydra, or God knows what else on the board, this guy needs to head straight for it. In that case, what I would do is definitely replace the Mega Club with the Mega Pike, because if you're going after big stuff, the club is going to be 10 attacks to AP4, and the Mega Pike is going to be 12 attacks to AP4 with rending, so just for 30 points, you get two more attacks, and you get to ignore regeneration on the enemy. You might want to replace the Mega Club with one of these ranged weapons, but as we've seen with these videos, my track record with War Machines, they're never gonna hit in the game. Your luck might be better, but me personally, I just try to avoid them. Our next unit is the Castle Breaker Mega Giant. 450 points, quality four, defense of three, fear three, fearless, scout, and toughness 18. Comes with Gate Smash for two attacks, AP four and deadly three, and a Mega Club, 10 attacks, AP two, you can replace the club with a pike, and you can give him trample. So with this giant having this scout rule, that means it's going to be able to move 12 inches before the game even starts. So this is going to be your shock and awe giant. If the enemy deployed on the line, or if anybody moved up in front of it, it's going to be able to get off a turn one charge. And again, with the mega club here, I would replace that with a mega pike, because the AP stays the same. You just get an extra two attacks with rending. So this guy, scout him up the board. Face first into the enemy, they have to deal with a toughness 18, fear 3, defensive 3, giant on turn 1. Then our last unit, the Bone Grinder Ultra Giant. 585 points, quality 4, defensive 3, fear 4, fearless, and toughness 24. This is your biggest of the boys. 8 attacks with Stomp at AP2 and 14 attacks at AP2 with his Ultra Club. You can replace the Ultra Club with an Ultra Flail for 18 attacks at AP1, an Ultra Hammer for 14 attacks at AP4, or an Ultra Pike, 16 attacks at AP2 with Rending. So now we've come back to the philosophy of the regular Giants with the Ultra Club, good all-around weapon, Ultra Flail, more attacks at AP1, Ultra Hammer, same amount of attacks at AP4, and the Ultra Pikes, more attacks at AP2 with Rending to get rid of regeneration. So let's say you're going to an event or a tournament, you're going to meet somebody to play a game, and you don't know what they're going to be running, and you've decided you're going to take Giants. 
In that situation, the Ultra Club is pretty good to stick with. If you do have the points left over and you want to blow it, go ahead and go up to the Ultra Pike. More attacks and getting rid of regeneration on the enemy. Plus, you could also, with 16 attacks, you're going to spike some of those AP4 if you roll a 6. But in the end, you're running a Toughness 24 Giant down the board. It's going to evaporate anything that it touches. So there we go, kind of short and sweet on the giant list. So what we are going to do, since I have you here, so let's go ahead and look at the army list that I made for this week. We have six units in it, two giants, three crusher giants, and a battle stomper mega giant. Let's go ahead and start with the big guy. Battle stomper mega giant, I gave him the trample upgrade and that was it. I figured the 10 attacks at AP2 and the three attacks at blast three. This is going to be able to get through the moderate armor of most of the stuff in the game with AP2. And Battle Stomp is there so that he does not get swarmed in combat. And then Crusher Giants, three of them, they're all outfitted the same way with a giant hammer. Six attacks AP4. This is going to be to kill pretty much anything I put it up against. The Crush is going to help us take out the larger things we run into that... We're going to need more than six attacks to deal with. All three of them have war paint for regeneration because they're going to be stuck in the middle of it. I want them to stick around as long as possible. And two regular giants, even though I hate war machines because war machines hate me and I miss constantly with them, I figure two guys with two attacks with blast and indirect weapons is going to be able to do something. So their job is going to be to sit in the back and just throw rocks at stuff that I don't want to deal with at that moment. I didn't put regeneration on them because, like I said, they're going to be sitting in the back. Hopefully they're not going to need it, but if anything does jump on them, they're going to have 10 attacks overall in combat for those AP1. They should be able to deal with any problems that they come across. So that's it for going over the whole giant army. So all that is left is to put the models on the board and let the carnage start. See you out in the garage. So we're out in the garage, everybody, here we go. This is our giant force. You can see we have our battle stumper mega giants. We have our six crusher giants kind of mixed in. And then we have our two giants that are going to be hurling rocks. I've already gone over the list, so there's really not much more explaining. Let's go ahead and take a look at what they're fighting. And they're going to be fighting against the dwarves. Last week, these dwarves took on the vampiric undead in what was probably my longest game of OPR ever played. Now the Vampiric Undead did win that game, but for some reason I have not been able to find the zombies. They must be off doing something else. So we are playing with the dwarves today. So this is the board for today. Again, six objectives all spread out evenly across no man's land with the randomized terrain put out on the board. We went for more lower profile stuff in Age of Fantasy versus what we had for Grim Dark Future. And again, at the end of all the train moving around, I just went through ahead and I just went ahead and threw a few more bushes on the board. So today we've got Uncle C over there. He's going to be running the Giants. And for deployment, we had Chopper, all of the war machines grouped together. Let's see what my uh, let's see what my dice is going to do there. Bunch of dwarves, choppers, marksmen, chopper, more dwarf warriors, berserkers, and the bearded veterans hanging out here on the side. And for the Giants, Mega Giant, both of our Giants hurling rocks, and then all the Crushers over here looking to turn into a phalanx of ridiculousness. So we're gonna do the three card objectives again. Let's see what our objectives are on the board. This time we have Seize Four, Seize Two, and Area Dominance are what we're gonna start with. Okay, let's see who goes first. Dwarves got three. Giants with the four. Giants go first. That's all. All right, Giants are gonna go first. What you doing? I'm here. Okay, so you're on objective four. What you gonna do with that guy? You gonna shoot him? Uh, I am gonna throw rocks over to catapults. Oh uh, no. Okay. Okay, two shots. Whiff. So we're going to have our Berserker start off going there 12 inches to there. End up like that. There's a giant there, what you throw it at? Uh, well, it, it's a blast weapon, so it's going to be better against groups of stuff. So we're going to throw him at the Dwarf King. Throw him at the Dwarf King and his guys there. Two shots. Okay, we got two hits. There was one hit. Was it two hits? One hit. One hit. Brain no working. 
So it was only one hit for blast of three. AP of one, the Iron Warriors, which the leader is with, have a save of three. With shield wall, we lose one. Yep. We're the veterans. We're just gonna mosey over here to there. Big Daddy. Gonna go stand on two. The helicopter is gonna go eight and then fire at the big guy. Yep, you're in range. So we got two shots, getting on a two. Okay, two hits. It is blast three, but you're only one target. So regular armor save, yeah, <laughs> you're fine. Yep, crush you there. All right, our leader and the iron warrior is gonna move out. To there. More Crusher loving. To there. The big squad of warriors here. It's gonna end up like that. Hmm. <laughs> Keep, keeping that right hand strong over there. <laughs> all right, so all the giants have activated. Time to move all of the dwarfs across the board to end up like that. We've got one shooting attack. These marksmen over at one of the slinger giants. So 10 shots of rifles hitting on a four. Yeah. Six hits. So there'll be one wound on a giant. So the last shooting attack of turn one, we're gonna have all three of the bolt throwers fire at this guy right here. So we're just gonna go ahead and group them up together. One shot apiece hitting on a four. Oh, we got two hits. So it's AP3, he's looking for a six. Two go through, so that means that would be 12 wounds, but there's regeneration. 12 regen rolls. So one, two, three, he's got four wounds left. So it's time to look at objectives. Seize four, the giants have four. Seize two, the giants have objective two. In area dominance, we both have three, so we're not gonna score this, we're gonna say it's a tie. Our new objectives are volley fire and hold six. First activation, right there, bang. So three attacks with blast of three, two hits, six saves on the naked dwarves. They're gonna lose four, yep, we're gonna lose four. 10 attacks, six hits saving on the six. Five more dead dwarves. So the Berserker's fighting back, the Berserker Lord, four attacks on a four. We got two hits, it's gonna be AP3. It's gonna take two wounds. Four more attacks from the regular Berserkers. Three hits. Three more wounds. So the big guy is down to 12 wounds, but the dwarves definitely lost combat. Four for the morale test. They are good. The dwarfs are gonna go for the volley fire strat, so we're gonna use this guy here to fire at him. One shot on a four. And of course it misses. Giant's turn. Then we're gonna hurl boulders right there. Yep, two shots on a four. So we got one hit, save on a three. They're good. Uh, we're gonna try it again with our second ballista at the same guy over here. One shot on a four. It hits. Save on a six. Fail, and then you got six regens. It only takes two. So that giant is still up with two wounds left. Okay. You go six over here and shoot at your ballista. Shoot the bullet. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, yeah. So King Dorf here is going to launch his assault on this guy. So the squad leader three attacks on three. It's gonna be two hits. AP three, looking for a six. Three wounds. Nine attacks from the ones that are left, looking for a three, and this is rending. So no rending, but seven hits, saving on a three. You take th four more. So this guy goes down to six, but now he gets to fight back. It means there are two separate attacks. Start off with the first one. So you're going for, you roll four dice. Hit on a four, one hit, AP one. Iron Warrior's gonna save on a three because of their shield wall. It fails, you lose one. 
and the rest. Four hits, and with their shield wall, they're going to be saving on a two. Saved them all. So they lose one here, and then time for the giant take a morale test. He's going to pass. Making a way downtown. Giants <laughs> pissed. So we're going to have one of our helicopters here. It's just going to burn all the way over to there. Okay. The second helicopter to there. Okay. So the Giants are done moving. Time for the rest of the dwarves to move. So that's how everything is moving on this side and then over here. We had our one squad of Dwarf Warriors charge into the big guy and the Britter Veterans come up the back. So let's go ahead and do some combat. First we're going to start with these riflemen firing at that giant right there. So it's going to be 10 shots hitting on a 4. 5 hits saving on a 4. So it's going to take 3. The last ballista to shoot actually does not have a line of sight to the one that's already wounded. So it's just going to fire at this one right in front of it. One shot. Hits, fails to save, six regens, it takes two. And then our last is gonna be this combat here. So we only got eight of them close enough to attack, hitting on a three. Hey, they all hit. Saving on a three, so he takes two wounds. So that's gonna take him down to 10. As soon as I can find it, there we go, 10. And then he gets to fight back. Nothing from there. Two, we got two there. Save on a six. It kills two. But that means that the giant won combat because it has the fear. So we pass on a four. We pass. So one, two, we're gonna take them off the back here. There we go. So for objectives, hold six. The giants still have six. Nobody's touched it, so they get two victory points. Volley fire, that hasn't happened yet. And area dominance, just because of all the stuff that's running around the field, the dwarves are actually able to score this because they still hold three objectives. So the new objectives are on the march and slay the king. All right, Giants, first activation, what are you doing? Swinging at that. Okay, so you're just going to boop. Okay, so make a giant. Three. So we got two blasts. Save it on a four. Ooh, we lose one. 10 AP two. Okay. So these are saving on a six. Ooh, we lose another five. Squad leader's gonna attack on a three. Two hits. Save me. Two saves. 12 more attacks on a three. Seven hits, save all three. Ooh. Ooh, one, two, three, four more. That puts Biggin down to a six, but with his fear ability, he still won the combat, so the doors need to take a morale test. So they have a morale of four, which they fail, but they are fearless because of their leader, and they still fail. There's still more than half of them left, so they are just going to be pinned, and Biggin just goes boop right back and giggles at the panicking dwarves. So these warriors over here are going to charge this guy, like that. Put the dwarf squad leader on a three. Three hits at AP1, looking for four, saves them all. And then 17 more on a three. Save it on a three. Fail five, but regeneration takes three. Guy's down to seven. Oh my god. Times like this where I go, why did I put those rocks on the base? Down to seven. Two crushes. One hit. That's a saved. And then six attacks, AP4. Ooh, two hits. Save it on a six. I saved one of them. So just the way the dice shook out, the dwarves are going to win that combat, even with the giant spear. Here we go. Morale. Passes. Okay, so Giant's gonna go there and then throw into that squad over here. We got two hits, so that's six hits. Saving on a five. 
They're gonna lose four. I guess they were all looking the other way as they got hit by a big old rock. So for the Dorf's turn, Dorf Captain and his buddies, they're just going to continue to wrap around Mr. Rock Thrower here and attack. So the Dorf King and the Black are gonna be his AP3 attacks. Okay, he's got two and two. Blacks are saving on a six, and the other one's on a four. So you take two wounds there. Eight wounds with the rest of the squad on three. We finally got one rending hit. Looking for a six. So there's one. Uh, looking for a three. Saves the rest. So a big guy here. It's down to three. Now time for him to attack back. Whiff. And then six regular attacks. Okay, we got four hits. Let's whiffy. The Iron Warriors are beefy boys. Saving on a two. We're good. So that is going to be a morale check for the Giants. He fails, but he has Fearless, so roll again. He's good. Okay. Going to turn and attack the chopper. Not the chopper! So the Crusher, one hit. AP two, deadly three. He's going to save. And six, six more attacks. He hits twice. Saving on a six. Takes two wounds. So the helicopter is down to four and automatically fails combat because it, it, it can't attack back. It just ain't got the hood spot to do it. Well, test. Fails. So the helicopter is pinned. The squad of berserkers is going to go all the way to the back to say hi here. The berserker champion, four attacks on a four. <laughs> Whiff. And then the rest of the berserkers. Three hits. AP two, so saving on four. One. Big guy takes one wound. Now his attacks back. Whiff for the blast, and then ten attacks. We got nothing there because of the fatigue. Well, because they only did one wound and the fear of three, the berserkers passed their morale test. So he's just gonna go in there. All right, the crushers attacks. Because he is a fatigue dude. Uh, one hit there. Saving on a six. It fails. So it goes one, and then we're just going to push right back in and swing back. Squad lead hitting on a six. Fail. 14 dudes on a six. Two. Saving on a three. Saves them both. So the doors lost combat. Failed their morale test, but they are fearless because they're leader. So they're still good. So our dwarf marksmen are going to fire at this guy. 10 shots on a four. Ooh, four hits. Save on a four. He's good. Okay. Giant's going back and throwing some more rocks. Two shots. One hit. One goes down. So he is whittling away at this squad here. You get to see the board all scattered. Oh, we're gonna have this helicopter and up here. He's gonna go around and he's gonna attack into the Iron Warriors there. Okay, the big attacks. Two hits. So I'm saving on a four. It's gonna be one dead. And then we got three hits here. Saving on a six. Oh, oh Lord. All right, they're gonna attack back. So they took out one, but then we get our three inches of wiggle wiggle. Hitting on a six with the big guy. So it's one hit at AP3 and one hit at AP nothing. At AP3 takes a wound. At AP nothing, he still takes a wound. Pick those up, roll them again for your regeneration. He takes one of those. And six attacks for the rest of the guys for nothing. Morale test for the dwarves. They're going to fail, but they pass with the fearless. Now the Giants are done, it's time to do the rest of the dwarves. These two guys are completely blocked up. They can't see anything, but he is going to fire at this guy. One shot out of four. Hit, misses. Of course. This helicopter is just going to sit here, and it's not even going to bother to fire its gun. And then this squad over here, our bearded veterans, are going to charge in to the big guy. Like that. Ten attacks out of three. 
Nine hits. Save it on a four, so you're going to take one, two, three, four, five wounds. Hold on. So that's going to be enough. <laughs> Thud. And these guys are going to recover on their activation. Let's look at our objectives. On the march, the giants are going to get that, and the dwarves can't because of those uh, artillery pieces. Slay the king, even though the big guy went down, it doesn't count as a hero. And Volley Fire still have yet to kill anything with these shooting attacks. So because the doors are behind, we're going to go ahead and get rid of Slay the King. And the two new objectives are going to be Seize 5 and Terrify. First activation. He's gonna go there and throw the marksman. We got one hit. Save it on a six. They're gonna lose two. So blue blip. Once they're gonna try for that volley fire, this ballista is going to fire there. Shot! And it misses, of course. Okay. More crushers into the dwarfs. Oh, pick a spot. There you go. Perfect. There you go. Yep. Okay, we got two hits there, saving on a six. Fail one. So it's going down, down. You're gonna go down. And two more hits, saving on a six from the AP four. One more goes. Now the way this is gonna move, everything's kind of odd in here. We got the we got the grot in the background moving dice, so that's where that's the most amount of doors we can get in there. Yes, we are joined in the garage today by the Grot and a Halfling. <laughs> Big guy! One hit. Oh wait, no, two hits. I'm not fatigued yet. Two fails. So we're just going to keep track. We'll do all the regeneration at the end. Five other attacks. So two more hits. Our saves. Okay, those are good. Now those two regeneration. So he ends up taking two. So that big guy hasn't been even hit yet, so he's down to ten. And the dwarves lost combat. Well, test. They're gonna fail. And they are still failing, but there's more left. So there's still enough left, they're not gonna run off, but they are pinned. So the, the giants are gonna score terrify as well. So everything in the garage is going crazy. We got people coming out of our ears. But with these guys pinned, even if they unpin, they're gonna be unable to get out of the way for the ballistas. And with just the state of everything else on the board, let's look at the objectives. Volley fire, even if that does go to the dwarfs, seize five is definitely going to be contested. And terrify, the giants just got that. So, so a final score of six to two, the giants crush the dwarfs. Yeah, so that happened. That's just part of the randomness whenever you use the mission cards. So that'll do it for us out in the garage this week. Hopefully you like the way the Giants turned out. And we will get to see them the next time we have an Age of Fantasy game, which is going to be in two weeks, fighting against the Havoc Brothers. So remember to like and subscribe. Leave a comment to all your friends about all the OPR fun that we're having around here. And I hope I see you across the table someday. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.